the different areas that they focus on covering um, throughout the year. But we're, our sixth graders have a really an amazing cohort of teachers um, and have access to those classes. Um, important tips for middle school. This is a big jump um, when they go into sixth grade. They get six classes, which we'll talk about. But here are three things that when I reflect on, I've spent my entire career uh, in middle school. I love it. I love teaching middle schoolers. Uh, but three things that can really help the success of all middle school students from a parent's perspective. Number one, really get involved. So if we, our goal is that every student does two or more extracurriculars, we find that students are much more successful when they're involved in athletics, when they're involved in clubs. Uh, it makes school fun. It makes them want to come to school. Uh, they're connected to teachers, uh, their club advisors, and their peers. Uh, and it just adds so much richness to their middle school experience. The other thing is they, they need to start checking their grades. Um, it's, 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 we're really setting them up for high school in that they need to monitor Skyward uh, student and family access. So families, you have not had to do that as much at the elementary level, but when they get to be sixth graders, that's really, really important that they start to monitor their Skyward student and family access to make sure they're not falling behind, missing assignments, and that provides opportunities that you can have with teachers. Uh, and then finally, start having conversations with students about their plans for high school and beyond. When they can start to visualize and talk about and verbalize, this is what I wanna do, this is what I'm thinking for my path. Um, I think it really helps them get that buy-in and working hard in middle school and seeing where they're going towards. So we do, we do want them to start thinking about that as young as sixth grade. Um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to our assistant principal, Mr. McBride. He's gonna talk a lot about some of the things other things we're doing to make all of our students feel safe, seen, and welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, we brought a program where we uh, combined two components of a program into the Principals 100 Club this year. And maybe if you have siblings, if your child has a sibling that attends here, you've heard about it, if you've seen it in the weekly newsletter. But uh, we look for positive behavior traits. Any staff member can acknowledge a student that's uh, showing those traits. Uh, they we award them with a character card. <clears throat> they come down to the office, they get some candy prize, and their card goes on a bingo row, that, that middle picture in the top there. When the entire bingo row fills up, we call all 10 of those people down and celebrate with like a medium level prize. Uh, and of those 10, we put all their names in a hat and draw the grand prize winner, which is usually a t-shirt as you can see there in the picture. So just a great way to keep uh, positive behavior at the forefront of what we do. Uh, we really want to go out of our way to make sure that the adults are literally seeing every kid on our campus. So we work super hard to look for those kids, not just um, the kids that have an easy time at school or an easy time with behavior, an easy time with grades, but some that haven't always felt like they belonged um, in any educational system. So we work very hard to identify all of them. And on the next slide, do I have it? Yeah, uh, there's a list of the character trait cards that we use. It's kind of the, the model for what we look for in student behavior. Uh, and you can read those to yourself, patience, kindness. But I was telling them, the fifth graders that visited today, a humorous way that I was, mnemonic device that I was taught was that pink kittens have red socks for Halloween costumes. And um, we all got a giggle out of that, but that's literally the way I, I learned that list of traits. Uh, it's so fun to have these positive interactions. Uh, as the, an assistant principal, I do discipline a lot, and that's not always the most positive interaction. So anytime you can have these opportunities to just go see kids demonstrating great uh, behavior, we take every opportunity that we can. Teachers, uh, classified staff members, everyone. Um, and one thing we're super proud of is that at lunch, we've all lived through two COVID years, which was very difficult on either not being on campus or being cam on campus, but having to sit still and sit in rows and not interact with kids. So we're very proud of what we have been able to develop as a lunch protocol. Uh, we start on the inside at a certain marker, 10 minute marker, 12 minute marker each, each lunch. Kids have the choice as part of that <clears throat> valuing their own ideals or what they, their decisions on how they feel comfortable and a sense of belonging. They can stay inside and hang out with their friends. 
They can go outside. Sixth grade kickball is probably the most popular recess activity on our campus, as that top picture indicates. Um, you can just stand around and talk with your friends, play football, play basketball. We have volleyballs. If they need equipment, they tell us and we get it. But we're just very proud of how many opportunities we've allowed them to be in charge of because, you know, at this age, you're developing your own identity and you want to be responsible and you want to have some autonomy. And uh, those are ways that we are looking to do that at OMS. And it's been very, very positive. We have a Character Strong program, which, uh, as the top indicates, we meet an advisory every Monday. That's the social emotional component of, of what we do with our curriculum. That's a phrase that you're probably aware of. Yeah. That's a program that we use to build community, uh, make sure that students feel mentally healthy, socially healthy, like they are a part of our positive culture, like they belong in our schools and in our classrooms. So there's a lot of tasks and activities that the entire school does every Monday. And then we take those concepts and try to build those into our curriculum, our classroom interactions, just the way that we run OMS. Thanks so much, Mr. McRae. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give kind of a, a heads up on the registration process. And then later on in this meeting, our guidance counselors We'll give more details about the next steps for our sixth graders. But basically this Wednesday, OMS counselors will be meeting virtually with the incoming sixth graders um, and then giving going through the process of how to choose their electives. And then once their elective is chosen, they're all set for sixth grade. Um, they don't have as many choices as sixth graders as they will in seventh grade, in eighth grade, and then in high school. They get more and more choices as they go on. So these are really the two schedules that they have. They have those five core classes that we talked about previously. And then the sixth class is really the one that they're going to choose. So they can choose a music class for the entire year, which would be band or choir. Uh, or they can choose kind of an elective exploratory wheel where uh, they might have art, middle school success, which is like a leadership class, contemporary world problems class, and then a technology class that really gives them some computer skills, goes through the Google menu of, of options that will prepare them for, for technology and other classes. So those are really the choices that they have when they register. Um, and so one of the purposes of this meeting, because big uh, decision is that elective class is we would love students to get introduced to our music programs at this level if that's something that they're interested in doing because for many students they start in sixth grade and then go all the way through uh, high school in our music program so we have our two music teachers put together some videos for you and i'm going to start with mr smith's video hey everyone i'm mr smith and i'm here to tell you that you should do band at Ording Middle School. Why? Because learning to play an instrument is awesome. It is so much fun to get to play and learn to play, and then it's even better to get to play with other people. Plus, you get to hang out with me in our awesome band room here. Just think, that could be you learning an instrument. Now, right about now, you're probably thinking, that sounds great, but what instruments can I play? Well, let me tell you. When you're starting out, uh, you start in beginning band on either flute, clarinet, alto saxophone, trumpet, trombone, or percussion, which means for percussion, you have to learn drums and bell. Here is the flute. Here is the clarinet. The alto saxophone. The trumpet.
the trombone. And if you do percussion, you have to learn both snare drum and mallets. This is snare drum. And here is a mallet instrument. When you're in band, you get to make music and learn a special talent. You get to play in concerts and parades, like this holiday light parade. And you can even go on trips, like this trip to the PLU College that we went on a couple years ago. When we went on that trip, they have a gigantic organ here, one of the biggest on this part of the country. And you can also play in assemblies and do all kinds of cool performances. All of that is to say you should definitely do band. It is a lot of fun, and I hope that I get to see you in the fall. Thanks, everybody. So really appreciate our band director, Mr. Smith, putting that together. Um, is he on here? I don't I am, that. yes. Oh, hey, Mr. Smith. Want to say hi to everybody? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hope to see your kids in the fall. Band Thanks, is cool. Mr. Smith. Um, and then we, the other option that students have hey, is everyone. I missed this. choir. And our new choir director just this year is Ms. McCarl, and she put together a video about choir, which is the other music option for sixth graders. Hi, I'm Kirsten McCarl, and I'm the choir director here at Ording Middle School. I'm also the choir director at Ording High School. Here at the middle school, we have three choirs broken down by grade level. So there's sixth grade choir, seventh grade choir, and eighth grade choir, though often the choirs will perform together at concerts. Singing in a choir helps students express themselves in a creative way, builds self-confidence, develops proper vocal technique, give students performance skills, and a strong understanding of music fundamentals. Choir builds thinking skills such as concentration, memory, and listening, and gives students the opportunity to sing a variety of songs from different styles and cultures. Students in choir have the opportunity to participate in rewarding performances and concerts, and singing in choir is a great way to make friends and build relationships.
Thank you so much, Mrs. McCarl, for putting that together uh, and her students for singing. We're really proud of them. Um, they're actually singing at a Mariners game coming up on April 23rd, the seventh and eighth grade choir is. So really uh, happy for them. Uh, if Mrs. McCarl is on here, give her a chance to say, say hello. All right, I, I don't think she's here tonight, but um, would love as many students as possible to get connected to choir and band. Um, and then our next, I'm going to turn it over to our counselors to talk about the next steps in our registration process. So today we met with the students and explained to them a little bit about um, how the registration process is going to go on Wednesday. Um, each fifth graders teacher in their classroom has already got them um, familiar with logging into Skyward, um, how they're going to be working on Wednesday to choose their electives. Uh, and today, Miss Joy and I went through kind of an idea of what the electives are going to be like, although they probably will not remember all of them when they talk with you all about them. Um, but the band and choir, it seemed like they were really impressed with. Um, so again, those are just a one year elective. So if they choose band and choir, that's the only elective that they get for the whole year. And then we have that four quarter rotation that Mr. Collins had mentioned, which is art one quarter, uh, middle school success one quarter, technology and contemporary world problems. Those will be um, the next two quarter rotations. So um, if you wanted to talk with your children a little bit about which one they want or if they if you want them to do band or choir and try that out, that's something that um, some of the parents can discuss with their students. And they do have a little bit of time to change it. So if they do decide that they want the four quarter rotation and then they're interested in band, um, we can still make those changes this year. Um, we just encourage them to really think about what they want. And um, it's a little bit trickier once school starts to make those changes for them. So in Skyward, we'll just take them through. If you can all see this presentation here, they'll click on their schedule and then hit request courses. And it's super easy to pick them after that. Um, it only lets you pick a certain amount of credits. So once they choose those, it will lock in those credits and they won't be able to choose anymore. And then it'll let us know if they haven't um, chosen enough of those for each term. Um, and it's that easy. So yes, you can see at the top where it says this needs to say one credit. It's super explanatory. So um, the teachers will be there. Ms. Joy and I will be on virtually to walk them through it and answer questions. Uh, last year was a lot of fun. They had a lot of questions and got through it really quick. So it's a, it's a pretty seamless process. Skyward walks everyone through it really quickly. All right. Thanks so much, Ms. Reynolds. So Ms. Reynolds and Mrs. Joy will be with the fifth graders on Wednesday. So talk to your students. Um, it'd be great if they choose the right one the first time. Um, really quick. One thing that all incoming sixth graders need to update is a thing called the student health form. So this is just kind of a heads up. We'll send these home with their fifth grade teachers. So look for it in your student's home folder or however, met, however that may, might be. Um, and then how to turn it in, we'll communicate that as well. So this is just an updated student health information form. And then at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Robbins, our ASB coordinator. Hello. So one of the things that we really are proud of our uh, work so far at, at Ording Middle School is our clubs. And we have a lot of clubs. They're all based on student interest and they're really student driven. So whenever we have a new club that comes up, um, students are allowed to find an advisor and work with, so it's kind of very student driven, but with adult supervision. Um, I've never had anyone want to start a club like fire baton throwing, but, but there would be insurance issues with that. So we try not to go too crazy, but we have a lot of fun with alphabet soup, anime, art, BIPOC, community service, creative writing, Dungeons and Dragons, knowledgeable leadership, ASB and technology and our yearbook clubs. Um, and we have, um, 
always different ones that we can offer. We can usually offer, if we can have enough student interest, a math club and a chess club, and they even get to go to competitions in our league. So um, all of that is a great way to get involved, especially if you're not so much on the sports side. I talked to a lot of kids today about, can do I have to choose between sports and clubs? And the answer is no, our sports seasons um, aren't that long. So you can usually go in and out and do clubs for a while if you want to, and then go back and do a sport and then go back to your club, which is very um, helpful as well. Uh, there's lots of leadership opportunities for kids to discover for themselves. If they're really passionate about something, they're, all of our clubs have officers and they can become officers in the clubs. And we also have our ASB, which is our student government. And you can get, a lot of kids get involved in that as well. Uh, student government, the ASB pays for things like uniforms, officials at all of our sports games, all of our student activities. And they also pay for a lot of things to help supplement all of our clubs. So the ASB is a, the government does a lot of financial work, but also a lot of work about advocating for students in our school system. And we encourage everybody to buy their ASB card to help support those efforts. And we also, every fall, have a color run, which is one of my favorite events of the year. It's also a lot of work and I lose a lot of sleep, but it's very fun. Uh, it's a school-wide uh, fitness event that every kid in our school gets to participate in. We work really uh, a lot with our PTTE, which I hope everybody will consider joining. Um, and they help us get every kid in our school a piece of spirit wear, a t-shirt for that day. And then of course, we get them very, very dirty with colored cornstarch and have a great deal of fun. It's also our biggest fundraiser of the year. So we ask for donations, there, it's a flat donation, and we have an after party then the week after the color run where the kids get to get out, get out of class free and we get to go to the commons and we have a big old party and we give away prizes and it's a great deal of fun. It's a wonderful school event. And we make sure that the fundraising aspect doesn't interfere with the entire school getting to be a part of this event. It really brings everybody together for 45 minutes of craziness. So. Thanks so much, Ms. Robbins. Um, and just keep an eye out for that color run fundraiser. Uh, it is our biggest and really main fundraiser of the year. So really important that we have success on that in the fall. Mr. Collins, uh, parent Jamie Jones has her hand raised, just letting you know. Um, okay, I think um, Jamie will answer questions um, at, the, at the end. We're gonna go through this and then we'll definitely have a chance at the end to answer questions. Um, so, I'm going to turn it over at this time to Ms. Buckholz, who's going to talk about health, fitness, and athletics. All right. Well, good evening. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, as Mr. Collins spoke earlier, sixth graders are very lucky at Ording Middle School that they get to have an entire year of health and fitness, better known as PE. And the reason for the different names is that we do spend the majority of our time in what you would think of as PE and our fitness activities. But during each semester or half of the school year, we will spend about four to five weeks in health where we will cover a wide variety of topics, um, everything from uh, the different types of health, physical, mental, social, emotional, talking about drugs and alcohol, talking about the right now I am currently teaching sex education to our sixth graders. And let me tell you, they're full of questions. Uh, and it's a really good quality time in the classroom where we can kind of switch their, their thinking from the activity time to more of a dedicated classroom moment. And, but the rest of the time we are in, in class, we're PE, and that looks different than elementary school. And the biggest place it looks different is that they change their clothes every day. We utilize our locker rooms. Um, they have a lock in a locker. They change out of their school clothes and change into uh, a black pair of shorts and gray t-shirt that say Ording Fitness on them. Um, as you can see here, it is asked that parents purchase that uniform. Very cost effective. This year it was $13 for the two items combined. Lots of kids buy two sets, so they have one that's clean all the time. And that way the kids are able to go back to school into their other classes not smelling like PE, or at least we hope they don't, um, by getting them out of their regular school clothes. PE is a little more demanding at the middle school level. 
if a student is injured or hurt or absent, then we're going to ask they, they make up their work just like you would if you were absent from your math class. And all of that communication will come home in September. Uh, our goal every day is to make sure that the kids are having fun while they exercise. And then safety is a key component that goes with that. So as far as planning ahead, I'm gonna answer one question right now. No, you don't have to take a shower in PE at Ordean Middle School. I get that one a lot. Uh, but during uh, August, when the paperwork comes out, you will get the information about purchasing that PE uniform. Um, and outside of that, it's just a great place to have a lot of fun and get some exercise. And as long as I'm talking, my next little hat that I can put on is that I am also the athletic director for Ordean Middle School. And I talked with all the kids today at lunch with the same information and they sounded super excited. And the biggest change was that this was the first year at Ordean Middle School where sixth graders were allowed to play every sport other than football. And that is actually a state role on the football. That's not an Ordean role. Uh, but all of the sports we've allowed the sixth grade participation. And we've seen some amazing uh, output by our sixth graders. We've had sixth graders on our varsity teams and not just on the varsity teams, but really contributing to them. And we do not offer any cuts at middle school. So there is a spot for everybody. Uh, right now we have 102 girls signed up to play volleyball here starting in a couple days. Um, where we're gonna put them all, we're not sure, but we're making it work and we're gonna make it fun. So you can see the list here in front of you. Each season, the students do have to pick one sport to play. So like, let's say in the fall, they liked both baseball and track, they will have to pick between the two. They can just do one of them. Good news is then the next season they get to pick a new sport. So by the end of the year, they'd be able to participate in four sports. One question that we don't have an answer to yet is for the spring of next year, we are hoping that our, uh, what is currently a girls cross country team, we are hoping to make that co-ed. Um, and that way we would have a sport for sixth grade boys to do in the spring. Uh, hopefully we will know that answer by the start of the school year if we have that approval. Uh, as far as what you can do now to be ready for sports, the number one thing we need you to do is to get your child a sports physical. This is usually done just at their normal yearly well child visit, but you do need to ask specifically for a sports physical because there's a couple things that they check that they don't do at the typical well child visit. So I recommend you get that done now. Uh, it, it will be good for two full years. So if you get it done this summer, it would get them all the way through the end of seventh grade. So I am always available by email if you have questions about sports. We'd love to have your kids out there. And right now, start thinking about what sport you want to play on the first day of school, because that's when we'll start baseball, fast pitch, and track. Thank Thanks you so much, Ms. Buckholtz. Um, we have our, if you're interested in getting Falcon gear, we have the OMS online store available. I'll put the link in the chat. And that's available until the 28th of March. Um, so every Friday is our Falcon Family Fridays, uh, where teachers are all geared up in Falcon gear. Um, I like it because I know what I'm going to wear every Friday. Um, and so you can get ahead and get that gear now um, until the 28th. And that leads us to questions. So um, we'll go ahead and start with, I know Jamie, uh, Mrs. Jones, you had your hand raised. If you want to go ahead and start. Um, yeah. Um, when would the chess club be? Um, we publish a calendar at the beginning of the year of all the clubs and when they meet and where. So we have to meet in the fall to assign all of our club roles and then we publish that calendar. Okay. And this year, I think... Jones. I think we don't have a chess club this year. Um, if I got Mr. Jones, we'll, we'll figure out Mr. Jones. Yeah. And if you want to ask questions in the chat, that's also um, uh, easy to do as well. Um, you can ask your questions in the chat or raise a hand. So Shannon Turnowitz, um, go ahead and ask your question. Um, can I suggest um, clubs. clubs? You bet. Um, can there be a Pokemon club, like a Pokemon Ooh. Go? Ooh, we have a Pokemon Go club. Go ahead, Miss Robbins. 
I was going to say, we have had a Pokemon Go club in the past, and we'll see if we can bring it back. If there's, we'll look at in the fall and probably put out a survey and ask for if there's interest in bringing it back. Yeah. Um, Tony LaValle? Um, for, for the sports, actually, no, for the lunch, do you have to, like, pay for the meal or, like, just pay for the snacks? I, I'm confused on that. Or do you That's a great question. Um, this year, all meals have been free. I'm not sure if that's going to continue next year. I have not heard. Um, the snack bar is not free. You have to pay. Um, snack bar is paid. Lunch down. items may or may not be free. Okay. Thank you. I'll stay on here until the last person uh, goes um, to answer questions, but I just want to say really, really appreciate you coming out tonight to support uh, your students. Uh, we're so excited to see them. Um, we had a great group today, and we look forward to the next three years. Um, Tawny, another question? Yeah, um, I was wondering about the sports physical for – um, the fall sports, like when would that need to be completed? You'll want to make sure it's just done before the start of the school year. So anytime, <laughs> I would recommend waiting until June because then it's good for two calendar years and then so to get them all the way through seventh grade. But if you can get them done, but if they just recently had a well child check, sometimes the doctors will sign off the physical based off of that. So it's worth asking your doctor's office on that. I was wondering because our well child checks fall in September generally and like insurance, you know, won't let you do them before that date. So I was just wondering if, you know, is, is a sports physical separate? Could I book that separately or is it kind of included in the well child check? Usually you can get away with doing them together, but I recommend giving a quick call to your doctor's office and they okay. might be willing to write one based off of last year's well child checkup okay. and then make a new one when he comes in in September. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I've done that myself with my kids when they're not due yet, and it works. Uh, Ms. Stover, good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, I might have missed something, but um, this is a question for Karen also. Um, my son, well, Riker, he plays hockey and um, lacrosse. Um, so do, I think we have, or he had the understanding of like, he has to play a sport in school, which is fine, but is that true? Or is it no, no you, you do not have to play a sport. We would love for them to. And we do have a school-wide goal of participating in what we call two extracurriculars. But that could be any of the clubs as well as any of the sports. But I will tell you, we have a lot of students that play in our sports that are also play lacrosse. And yep. we find that those skills cross over pretty nicely to some of our other sports. Okay, yeah, Riker, his hockey season, which I think we have the Kaufmans on here too. Yeah. From like September to March. So <laughs> yeah, it is. But I'll tell you, you know, a lot of those kids still enjoy the school sport just because yeah. it's something different. But no, it absolutely is not a requirement. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll definitely talk it over. So I was just making sure. So awesome. And as, as long as I'm talking, I see a question about registration for sports that is done online in what's called family ID. And we will send out an email uh, offering when that is going to be open where they can start signing up for the fall sports. So just kind of pay attention to your email um, and we will send that information out when we actually open up for each sports season when the registration is there. Thank you so much. Yep. Sometimes when you say that's a school goal that everyone does two things, they hear you have to. Definitely not required to do sports. Do you see that question, Ms. Buckles? Yeah, I was just going to unclick. So we do have a requirement for ordering middle school sports that students need to be passing all of their classes with no Fs and then also their overall GPA being at least a 2.0. However, 
Uh, we try to use it as a carrot to keep them eligible. So they are allowed to be on the team if their grades go down, but we do not let them participate in the actual competitions until they have their grades back up. And that's usually a pretty good motivator. Most of our sports offer some type of study hall as a portion of their practice, or they will tell the kids they can't come to practice till they go to a classroom and work on their grades. So we try to definitely keep them uh, hand in hand. And I see another sports question about information about sports that aren't offered through the middle school. Uh, the Ording Parks and Recs offers some uh, sports options. Um, and then some of the sports, like when you hear talking about uh, lacrosse or hockey, those are often club sports that are offered uh, maybe even outside the town of Ording. Uh, some of our kids will play in neighboring areas like Sumner or up in uh, Buckley or Puyallup for some of those other sports. And yes, volleyball is only for girls. That's actually a state of Washington. It's only a girl sport for even in high school. What are you doing? Oh. Uh, but if you have a boy who likes volleyball, there are some of the local club volleyball places that offer boys volleyball. So if that is of an interest that it, it, unfortunately, it's not cheap, but they do have an option of boys volleyball. I can't help but be a mom here for a minute. I see lots of questions about what your kids can buy at lunch. That's one more reason to get good at checking your Skyward account as a parent. Not only can you keep track of your kids' grades, but you can actually see what they purchase at lunch. So you can see if they purchase an actual school lunch or if they're buying themselves, you know, five packages of baked chips as their lunch. Um, you can actually see specifically what they order. So I really encourage parents to get familiar with Skyward. It's a great tool to kind of keep a tab on your kid. You can also call the school and put a no snack bar hold on your account, should you wish. Thanks so much, Leslie. The uh, guidance counselors, and I should have had Ms. Buckle's email up there as well for sports, are really the best uh, first people to contact if you have any questions about registration uh, or sports. But response time is quick, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and uh, you can reach out to me, Mr. McWright, uh, Ms. Robbins, any of us can help you with your questions or get you to the right person. All right, so if there are no further questions, I am going to close this meeting. I'll give it about 30 more seconds. Really appreciate all the staff who showed up tonight. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, good night, everybody.